This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit headed grower. Now, today we're doing Ask the Aquaponics God slightly different. What are we doing here today? We're doing it outside. I'm gonna be answering some of the basic questions that I get on the uh, comment section, inside of the comment section. Some very basic questions that I can just add, uh, answer and it doesn't take too much of my time to answer and then I'm pretty sure that you know a lot of people have the same questions so I wanna go ahead and answer it and help out the people out there. The Aquaponics God is here for you. So that's what we're gonna be doing on, probably try to do this maybe once a week, once every two weeks, just compile some of the basic questions together and then go ahead and just get out here and answer them for you guys so but if you got some crazy questions or you want some review or something like that or you want your system uh, specs or anything no we're not doing that that has to be video format still if you want help with that so with that being said let's get to the first question man I have it here and grip my phone out real quick man and let's see so the first one comes from javel death seven and what he asks is he says if you don't want to split flow could you dig holes and bury the fish tanks, say one half to three fourths into the ground instead of raising the bed? Now what he's referring to is referring to the system that we recently built. He's talking about the split hole here coming over here to the bed and then the, uh, coming over to the tanks. So what he's asking is, is if he didn't want to split flow, because I said in another video, if you didn't want to split flow the system, you had to raise the beds up you had to raise these beds up higher than the tank to allow the water to drain to drain from here and then come into the tanks and then you wouldn't have to do it in a split flow but obviously if you do it that way you're gonna have beds that are way up here you're gonna be reaching way up here to try to get some vegetables so that's not really ideal so what he's asking is can you just go ahead and come over here to the tanks can you take these tanks? These tanks are about mm, two and a half feet. Can you take these tanks and can you just dig them underneath the ground? Can you dig them underneath the ground? That way, the flow from this here, the outlet, could come, boom, and it would be coming and flowing into tanks that are under the ground. So now to answer this question, you could do this. Now let's go, go over it real quick. Let's go over it real quick and find out if it's worth doing um, because for me it, it's not it's not worth doing but let's go over it real quick so what you would have to do if you want to do that if you didn't want to split flow and you wanted to just have it continuous motion what you can do is yes you can take these tanks you sink them under the ground so that means so this here is about a foot off the ground that means this tank here should be lower than that it should be lower than that so the outlet of this here of the uh, uh, the floating raft the out outlet is probably going to be somewhere around about this height. The outlet here needs to be higher. This needs to be higher than the tank, the top of the tank here. So that means we'll have this tank underground. So that means this tank will be underground about two feet. Now, that's fine and dandy. Yes, you can, the DWC would overflow, come right into the tank. No problem. That's not the problem. The problem is now we have a tank that's two feet under the ground it's gonna be two feet under the ground all the way under there and that now is the lowest point in the system that's the lowest point in the system what do we have on this system here we also have a sump tank you remember this we have a sump tank and the sump tank is what the sump tank is the lowest portion of the system so we have this that's two feet under the under, under the um the surface of the ground that's a problem with the sump tank now because now the water from this tank if it's all the way two feet on the ground, it cannot make its way back up to this sump tank. So that means we have to take this sump tank here, and what do we have to do? We have to do the same thing. We have to bury it under the ground. We have to bury it even deeper than what we buried the fish tanks. Because now the fish tanks are two feet under the ground, that's where the bottom drain is at, and it's where it's draining from. So it needs to be able to drain from the fish tank, come underneath, from the uh, tank and then be able to still have room or enough elevation or gravity I'm sorry it has to have gravity in order to feed to the sump tank if the sump tank is higher it's not going anywhere so now we have to take this sump tank 
And this thing is probably gonna have to be dug, man. So this is the water level here. This is about the water level here. So we need to dig this down two feet. We need to have, well, we need to have this all, uh, two feet. This part needs to be uh, two feet below. I'm, let me, <laughs> I'm saying that wrong. Two feet, so we need to go two feet down underneath the ground and then go this much more. So this is probably about uh, 11 inches. So we have to go two feet under the ground to match the level of the tanks if they were uh, dug underneath the ground. And then we have to have this extra room here for the water to flow in. Because this is where all the water is flowing back to and this is the water level that it's pretty much at right here. So we, this would have to be dug probably around three feet. So we're talking about putting this three feet under the ground and this is a lot of digging here. This is a lot of digging for such a simple system. So that's why I'm not doing it. That's why I'm not doing it. You can do it, absolutely. Yes, you absolutely can do it. But it's gonna be a lot of effort put into it and um, I, quite frankly, I don't think that it's worth the effort when you're trying to dig all these tanks underground and doing all that. It's just not worth it to me, but you can do it. So with that being said, let's check out the next question. Let me go back into the handy, the handy dandy cell phone, man. From Jackson Gross, he says, why have solids move into the sump tank, then the pump. Is that further breaking down the solids as they move through the pump into the filter? Seems like another place to get solids built up. Okay, so you're asking why do we bring on this system, the solids come from here, boom, comes into the sump tank. Why bring these things into the sump tank and, um, and then get it pumped over here? Well, we bring it into the sump tank because this is where the um all the water is going to collect now from the sump tank it's going to get taken into the pump now i have this thing on here that i'm going to be hooking up because i don't have it hooked up yet i have this thing which is this right here it's an extra pipe that i'm going to be putting across i'm going to configure it i'm going to put a t on the end of this here i'm going to put a t on the end of this i have to go and get it still put a t on the end of this and i'm going to connect this here here to here so the solids are just going to come straight straight in from here go through the pipe and then make this make their way and get sucked through the pump and then they go to the pump they have to come to the pump because the pump brings it into the bead filter this is the filtration here so this is the filtration here so that's why it comes into the pump and it needs to go into the filtration it comes to the filtration before it goes to any other portion of the system before it touches a floating raft it goes through filtration before it touches a fish tank it goes through filtration everything is filtered first through here so it just all the solids just come through here and I basically want them to come into the pump I want them to get sucked into the pump and I still want to take advantage of having a sump tank so it's just adding it all together I'm not gonna let the solids just come all out and flow all over here that's not what that that's not what that, that's not what's happening that's not what's happening we're still gonna connect this portion here and connect it here, have a T, I'm gonna have a T probably coming out a little longer, so this is still pulling extra water along with the solids that come from there. So it's gonna be pulling in there, and then pulling from the pump, boom, coming up, filter, there's beads in here that filter out the solid waste, and boom, it comes down, and then it gets dispersed through the entire portion of the system. Very, very simple, so that's why we use that's why I have it going to the sump tank and um, going into that, going in that manner. So let's go into the next question. Let me get my phone out, man. Let me see. Let me see, man. Where is it at? Okay. Question. So how big are those round tanks? How many liters? It seems a huge filter and blower. It, it seems a huge filter and blower. It looks good setup. I'm guessing cost 10 grand or so. Okay, so the size of these filters, um, these are 126 gallon filters. I don't, you can do the calculation on it right now or the, the um, conversion to it to find out how many liters that is, but it's 126 gallon tanks and I don't know the conversion to liters off the top of my head. So 126 gallon tanks. What else did you ask on here? Let me see, because I forgot already. Um, I'm guess. Oh, I'm guessing it costs around ten grand. So, I mean, we can do the math on it real quick. Let me see. I'm just gonna guess because I don't remember the exact prices of it. But these tanks here, uh, if I remember correctly, I think they were about 
maybe five or six hundred bucks each somewhere around there i can't remember it so we'll just say a thousand dollars for that the bead filter uh it's around two grand the pump so we have that's three grand the pump is around 500 bucks somewhere around there 500 bucks so we're at what thirty five hundred dollars the sump tank uh, i don't remember maybe a hundred bucks so thirty six hundred dollars the floating raft maybe mm, we're talking a thousand bucks twelve hundred bucks about twelve hundred bucks somewhere around there twelve hundred bucks so what do we have thirty six hundred plus twelve hundred bucks that's um thirty six hundred plus twelve hundred uh that's like 4,800, somewhere around there, 4,800. Okay, and then we have the blower here, which was probably, I think, all the blower set up. I think it was like another mm, 700 bucks, so that's probably like 5,500 right there. Where are we at? 48 plus 700 to, that's 50, yeah, about 5,500 bucks. Um, and then the extra piping and all that, maybe that's like an extra hundred bucks, the valve valves and all that. So 5,600 bucks plus the hoop house or the high tunnel. Ah, oh, man, I can't remember. Maybe another two grand. So we're talking about 70, maybe about 7,500 bucks right now. Oh, plus the gravel. The gravel is about another 500. Uh, yeah, that's about eight, eight thousand, eight thousand dollars. I don't know if the mat, I'm doing it just off the fly so it's about eight thousand dollars right now i'm trying to think extra lumber yeah so i guess i mean extra lumber let me see anything else hmm extra accessories yeah maybe about eight grand eight somewhere between eight and ten grand that's what you're looking at yep so i guess you are right good good calculations on that so somewhere around there somewhere around eight to ten grand i don't know i don't remember the exact um off the top of my head but it is somewhere around there so you're right uh let's see what else seems like a lot of work and money for so little plants that you will be growing can you add more growing space or are you at the maximum for the fish tank so you're saying that it's a lot of money invested for such a small uh, amount of plants and you know that is subjective you know that's relative to what your finances are and what you value and what, what your value is with aquaponics that's what that that's what that boils down to and you gotta remember this is the school of aquaponics so we want professional stuff we just not want to throw up anything and, and, and anything out there we want professional stuff and to make it look you know as presentable as possible so that's an investment that's not an, that's an investment you have to remember that the least you want to invest your money the more you will invest your time. So if you want to build it and do everything and try to build your own tanks and all this other stuff and build your own, you know, DWC and build your own filter and all that, that's going to take up time. It's going to take up time. So whatever you value, that this is all subjective. You cannot, there's no hard rule on this. Whatever you value your time as, then that's how much money you're probably willing to spend. If you don't really value your time and you want to do everything DIY and all that, then that's fine. But that's your prerogative. That doesn't, that's not the same thing for everyone. You know, there's plenty of people out there. Your money circumstance isn't the same as someone else's money circumstance. You, there's millionaires out there that they would easily pay something like this. This is like chump, this is small stuff to them. They would either easily pay 10 grand you know for a system or something like that if they want it to be done right if they want it to be done right and just have the right equipment so that type of question you know is subjective it's not something that is that you can just place on every single person and i can't do the same thing uh myself i can't expect every single person to want to spend money like this on a on a system i don't expect that from all people but if it's someone who out there, the people who are serious with it and who have money to spend, I'm going to give them the, the advice. I'm going to tell you, you're going to just go ahead and it's better to spend the money up front than to spend your money or than to spend your time all the way on the back end. You're going to spend one, one or the other. It's going to happen. You're either going to spend your money or your time. You're going to spend your time building a DIY system and going through all the, you know, trying to fix it and trying to do all the maintenance on it. And do all that stuff. You're, you're going to either do that or you're just going to get it done uh, the right way. And then just say, you know what, that's just an upfront investment cost, you know, a, a, a in this system. So those are the options there. So keep that in mind when you're looking at, you know, people's systems and stuff like that. 
a lot of people they don't understand that there are other systems you can get manufactured systems professional systems they don't understand that so they have the money and they think that there's no other options out there so we're just showing people that there are other options out there other than the uh you know just trying to build everything on, on your own because that's when i first started i didn't want to do that i didn't want to do that if i knew better when i first started i wouldn't have spent all the money on all the stuff you guys seen the pile the pile of mistakes i would not have i've spent more money on the pile of mistakes than i did with this system here much more money on making mistakes and trying to you know build everything and much more money on mistakes so it, it caught up with me on the end so now i'm just like nope i'm not doing that if i can buy it and i feel like it's worth the investment then i'm going to invest in it if i have the money for it if i have the money for it i'm going to do that that is just my philosophy from here on i did enough building all the other stuff and doing all that i've done enough of that already i'm past that and i want you know i want to enjoy doing aquaponics instead of being a maintenance man so that's just my take on that you know, everyone might have a different opinion and different perspective on that, and I respect it because it's not a one size fits all. You know, there's some styles that fit one people, some styles that fit another type of person. You know, and there's some hobby or whatever. If you're asking this question about aquaponics, you're probably not, if you see that investing in aquaponics or spending good money on something with aquaponics, if you find that a problem, then this is probably not where your passion is really at. I don't have a, I will spend, I've spent all of my money on aquaponics, to be honest with you. I spent all of my, when I started six, seven years ago, or uh, in 2011, when I started then, I spent all, all the money that I had saved from the, the Marine Corps, I spent most of it on investing and trying to figure out aquaponics. That's what I spent most of my money on because it was a true, and still is, of course, obviously still is even more, a true passion. You probably have another area Another area in your life where you will spend like top dollars on. Maybe it's video games or anything. You'll pay. There's people out there that will pay. It just depends, you know, on the passion that you have for that hobby. So hopefully that answers your question. I think I'm going to end right now. Um, and I look forward to doing more of these, man. Um, to getting out here, speaking to the people. And letting you guys know some answers on some of the questions that you guys have. Some of these basic questions that, um, that you guys have. I appreciate you guys asking the questions and being inquisitive. So that's always very important and hopefully, you know, these videos and the questions and answers and all this stuff is helping you guys out. And I wish there was, you know, I wish I had the opportunity to just help everyone out all the time. But unfortunately, it's just not the case. I have a limited amount of time and I have to, things that I have to do on my own. So it takes a lot of time to sit here and, and go through all the questions, respond to all the emails and all that stuff. So just try to do something like this real quick uh, to get you guys some information out there and to get you guys thinking. So with that being said, man, hopefully this has helped you guys out. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!